Hello friends, thank you for joining me again for another episode of UX Spotlight. Today's episode is about Nosedive, uh, a pastel colored Black Mirror episode which shows us a fictional world where people rate and are being rated for their behavior and posts. Um, and depending on the rating, they are going up or down the digital social ladder, affecting everything from their mortgage to uh, which apartment they can leave, which car they can rent, and, and generally they receive better or worse treatment uh, depending on the rating by other people. Because there's this need to maintain and uh, constantly increase the rating, their behavior is not really genuine and uh, it's tweaked to comply with the social norms. Our character, Lacey Pound, is an office worker with uh, an above average uh, social rating and uh, after being invited to a wedding with highly rated people, she managed to get herself into trouble as a series of uh, unlucky events unfortunately dropped her rating to uh, unacceptable for the society levels. How realistic is this? Actually, a few years ago, back in 2015, we were very close to ending up like that. Uh, Nicole McLeod and Julia Cordray were the co-founders of People, an app whose only purpose was to rate ordinary people whether they liked it or not, uh, which is this, by the way, is not to be confused with people, the UK charity supporting parents and children to learn together. Completely different thing. Rating ordinary people who mind their own business is, of course, absolutely terrible for so many reasons that I can't even begin to list here. And it's not really the purpose of this episode. But thankfully, the response it received echoed that sentiment. Now, let's have a look at the user experience of Lace's uh, fictional or prophetic, time will tell, uh, world. As, uh, as well as some of its human-to-human -human interaction that is presented there. Okay, so this is a very interesting interface, uh, and the device itself is so simple. It all looks like the operating system, the device, everything is built around facilitating ratings. That, that's all it does, apart from texting and calling, of course, uh, because that's all you need. It's, it's designed around social, social features. Unfortunately, not uh, for a good purpose. <laughs> yeah, that will be me before I press record for these videos. Having a look at all these um, images of the, of the interface, it does look that it's based around the ratings. It's basically a rating operating system, rating OS if you like. Let's pause here, because this is a great interface. You have uh, the user's image next to the name, which is a uh, font that's big size. Uh, and, um, and these are the main things that need to grab your attention. There is the prime user next to the name. Uh, when something is next to the, the name, it usually indicates that the, the user is either a paying user or, um, or some sort of user who is famous. So they're checked by the service, like Twitter does. It, gets, it gives this little uh, blue checks to famous people. I don't have one. Uh, and that's that's all good, but the contrast there on this interface, it's so bad. Uh, and, and I know that Lacey is wearing these contact lenses, so she can see through those contact lenses uh, all this stuff, but still it's really, really diff difficult to discern what's on there. This is uh, interesting behavior. Look how she rated without even looking at Lacey. We tend to avoid eye contact when there is something confrontational or something we're comfortable with. Also, where you're in a narrow space, such as a lift, and at close proximity with another human being, you notice how uncomfortable you are. And you either look away or if, God forbid, you have eye contact, then you're trying to find a subject that you know beforehand that you both are going to agree with, like the weather. Uh, this is due to our primal instinct to act in a way that cannot be construed as, as threatening. Look at its workspace. The screen is glass, the phone is entirely made out of glass, uh, everything, because of course, science fiction and the future and everything is, is glass there, as we saw uh, on my other video from, uh, from my Minority Report. The, um, the fact that the background is frosted it helps a bit, but it's still it's very difficult to read. There's no real purpose why it should be done like that, apart from it looking pretty. 
a couple of hours and you'll be wondering when, you, when that headache came from. Such a detailed interface and it's a shame because it's, it's based around all your social life and it's just about the likes and the ratings uh, as, 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 as we'll see uh, later. I like this transition from the phone to the screen, it's just a swoosh, swipes and goes straight to the screen. But it seems that the phone is assuming too much with this swiping gesture. It looks like this one gesture to rule them all. Because at the moment you have uh, swipe to rate, uh, swipe to dismiss, uh, swipe to accept, and swipe to um, enlarge the screen from the, from the phone to the desktop. But when it comes to real life user experience and real life interfaces, it's best to avoid uh, only gestures for specific actions, to make sure that we comply with the accessibility standards. We, uh, we have to make sure that a swipe uh, gesture also has an action, um, a, a button to do the same action. <laughs> You've been rated. It's such a terrible message. But the details here are great. You have this arrow pointing down, this animated arrow to let you know that you've been rated down and also this, this falling sound is just, is just amazing. So this bit here is where it's revealed how the rating is affecting your life. There's options. You know our Prime Influencers program? Do I qualify for that? No, no you don't. Hit 4-5 and there's a 20% discount. <laughs> This is the scary part. This stuff is happening right now. I mean, in the simplest form, look at Uber. The higher your rating, the more of a chance uh, you'll get to be selected by the driver. But it's not just that. When you apply for a mortgage or you want to borrow money, there's another number that's telling if you're gonna get a nice apartment by the river or a hole in the ground under the bridge by the river, which is the credit score. Again, the contrast is so poor, I have no idea how to reach anything in there. Ah, analytics. In uh, the world of user experience and digital products, we use analytics extensively because it helps us get an idea of what's happening with the product, how people are using it, what they're focusing on, uh, and this gives us a guide and a steer as to where to direct our attention, which bits of the interface need uh, to be iterated, need to be tested with the customers. And the same techniques apply here as well. And in fact, many social media companies have similar charts that provide all the data to the users and the customers so they can be more effective with their posts in terms of time and in terms of uh, which audience they're addressing and to maximize immersion. This specific part is very realistic. Ideally, that's upvotes from quality people. Quality people. Mm, I fours. Impress those upscale folks, you'll gain velocity on your arc. And there's your boost. So what he is saying here is very interesting because when you're rated highly by uh, people with higher rating, it's giving a greater boost than being rated highly by people with lower rating. And we see this uh, in social media as well. And LinkedIn as an example has something similar. Like when, when you've been recommended, it's pointing out if you have been recommended by someone who is highly skilled in that specific area. Now, another example is when an influencer is recommending a product. Uh, an influencer tends to be someone with um, a high perceived value uh, by their followers. As a result, the rating of a specific product can make or break it. And it will be more important that someone who is not an influencer uh, judging it or rating it. Yeah, so now she's doing that typical thing where you like for like. Uh, the transactional uh, liking system. This means that liking is more important than the post itself in terms of the post quality. And, uh, and there's an expectation from the recipient of that like to reciprocate. Instagram is full of people who request this. Follow me and I'll follow you back. Like my picture and like yours. And on top of that, even if, um, even if they follow you, if you don't follow them back, uh, they will unfollow you afterwards because, because they have to maintain a good following versus followed ratio. And look at this terminal. The phone is the source of everything. Who you are, what your rating is, what you've been doing with your life, who your social circles are. 
it's readily accessible to everyone uh, and, uh, and of course to the airlines. This interconnected system is not unrealistic, of course. Uh, as an example, a friend of mine who went to Singapore and at the airport he wanted to uh, get the tax back and he was actually able to claim the tax back from the purchases he made during his stay in Singapore just by showing the passport at the airport. Think about that. Ma'am? Okay, so, in order to restore calm, I'm invoking my authority as airport security to dock you one full ranking point as a punitive measure. This is a temporary <gasps> measure. No! The score reverts to normal in 24 hours. No, 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 but During I need it now! Period, all down votes are subject to a times two multiplier. Times two? We recommend you avoid negative feedback at this time. I'm on double damage? Please, remove yourself from the airport immediately. This is amazing to me. It's so harsh, that world, even the penalty, is not just pay with your money and you're on your way, it's a lot worse. It's designed to ruin your life. Every negative rating is double and the positives are uh, single multipliers. Side note, please don't design to ruin people's lives. As designers, we are ethically and in some cases legally responsible for all these types of things. And whatever we, we get out of the door, it's our responsibility. I've recommended a Ruin by Design book by Mike Montero quite a few times in this channel. I will recommend it again. A couple of things on the car user interface. If you watched my previous episode of UX Spotlight, I was talking about the buttons in the digital world. Uh, here we have all the wrong ways that you can design a digital interface on a, on a car. When you're driving, you don't, want, you don't really want to be distracted because you have one main goal, which is to drive the car, not run over any, any people and not crash it. So the physical buttons, the traditional physical buttons, give you this tactile feedback so you can use them without having to uh, look at what you're uh, pressing or what you're doing. You will notice this example, if you look at the keyboard, you most likely have these little uh, bumps over the um, uh, buttons of F and J. This is to orient the fingers without having uh, to look at the keyboard as you type. And similar things happen on the car as well. You will notice if you touch uh, the, um, uh, the volume buttons, for example, or the menu button on the steering wheel, you know exactly which one is uh, plus and which one is minus just by the direction and just by the feel. In the absence of physical buttons on a screen like this one, we would need to rely on spacing, uh, size and color uh, to tell the buttons apart. As an example here, Lacey is, ta is tapping on what seems to be a random button to answer that call. Also, if you look at the thermostat there, uh, there's no indication at which part uh, of, the, of the thermostat uh, control wheel the temperature, the temperature is at. And how would you adjust it? And as an example, look at an interface uh, from a Tesla car and how, for instance, uh, how far uh, away and how spaced the buttons are. It's terrible. This, this is why we need standards when it comes to ports. It's not great on the phones, it's even worse on the interchangeable lenses where a lens from one camera brand does not fit the body of another one. And it definitely is terrible if you can't use your car because the cable won't fit or if you don't have the proper adapter to make it work. Also, did you notice that the cable is very similar to uh, the Apple, Apple's lightning cable? Just saying. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe if you found this useful. And I hope to see you again for my next one. Take care and design responsibly.